Good morning. The scripture reading today is from 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 24. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God is good all the time. God is good. Can we turn around and then simply say, hey, I know you. Can we do that? Hey, I know you guys. I know you. I know you. We are blessed to have you guys here. We are glad you are here worshiping with us this morning. All right, can we all pray together? Let us pray together. Dear God, we thank you once again. Thank you once again for your unending grace, unconditional love. Unshakable, unshakable mercy and compassion. God, we are asking for the understanding of your word. God, guide us and lead us, teach us, mold us, transform each one of us to listen to your message. As we listen to the message of God, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the gospel lead us and guide us and teach us and take us to the place where we need to be. God, we love you. In Jesus' name, Everybody said, Amen, Amen. Um, I was born, I, I was not born here in the United States. I came here 15 years ago as a student, and then I went to second master program here in Kansas City. And I, when I got here 15 years ago, I got my student visa. And right after, uh, 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 all the finishing uh, my program four years and then I apply for my religious visa. I got my full-time job and I apply for my religious visa. It was approved and I has been a religious worker here in the United States. And uh, we're very fortunate, Esther and I we were very fortunate. Uh, uh, four years ago we applied for the green card. Uh, probably six years ago. Uh, we applied for the uh, green card, a uh, couple years pending. Uh, we, were, we were not able to visit Korea. So uh, right after, fortunately, our green card uh, was approved and then we took uh, uh, Paul uh, to Korea. And I did a mom, so uh, Paul, when he was almost, almost three. And then my two kiddos, Matthew and Amy, and of course, uh, Paul. Paul was born in New York, and thanks be to God, Matthew and Amy, they were born here in Chinook, Kansas. Right? Woohoo! Right? Uh, finally, uh, Esther Ann and I, we, we can go to Korea anytime we want, because, you know, we have a green card, and then there's one, there's one big difference between green card holder and a citizen. We don't have any right to vote. That is the only one difference, uh, uh, having a green card and becoming a citizen. Next year, uh, Esther and I will be uh, applying for the citizen and we'll become a citizen, U.S. citizen. And Esther was asking me a question, and, and do we really need to be a citizen here? Honey, we should be. So next year, once all the process is done, and then we will become our U.S. citizens, and then we will be celebrating together, uh, become our U.S. citizens here in the free land of the United States. Do you know how much money we have spent for getting a green card? student visa and religious visa and, and green card to get a green card. We, Esther and I, we spent $28,000 to 
get a green card. 28,000 US dollars. But you were born here in the United States and you have a privileged right and blessings and responsibility to take a vote, right? Well, let me, let me ask you a question. Is voting more, uh, more of a right or privilege or responsibility? When it comes to the nature of our democracy, uh, voting is our right as a U.S. citizens, U.S. civilians. Voting is such a great privilege for us as U.S. citizens. Voting is our responsibility as we are living in the free land of the United States of America. We are getting there. As Jen and I, we are very close. We are getting there. As we carefully consider our two candidates for the next president of the United States, we as Christians and we as believers truly respect for every vote and voice. We as Christians should not push or judge others or create any misinfo uh, about a uh, candidate for the United States. Next president. While you're not here for uh, whom to pick, I am not asking you to, uh, uh, you know, any, any certain candidate and, and I ask you to, to pick. No. We as believers should be kind. Even other people are different from you. We must respect for every vote and every voice while we honor our voting and our responsibility, privilege, and right. Voting is a very qualified privilege, both an honor and responsibility. Voting is very powerful. It's such a wonderful blessing. Voting is such a blessing when we deeply understand what it means to be a people of the free man. And when we deeply think about what it means for the future of our nation. Friends, you know, to being a pastor during the election season is pretty tough because, you know, so many uh, uh, divisive uh, 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 rumors, misinfo, uh, election season is really tough with so many challenges. Fear is everywhere. You know, the state of our lives and families and churches and nations and the world we live today can be very, very discouraging, divisive, depressing as well. You, we, we're not, we're, we don't want to see our nation fully divided. We don't want to see our nation is so discouraged and depressing in the future, in the midst of our political strife and division, the season of election. Our top priority as a Christian is to do good, not to harm. Stay in love with God 24 hours. As we continue to do what Jesus did in 2,000 years ago, we intentionally practice love. Kindness, forgiveness, mercy, grace to the world, nation, and the people around us. Even the people who are different from you. Maybe, uh, uh, maybe color is different from you. Nationality is different from you. Maybe their, their perspective, their political background is different from you. We show mercy and compassion, kindness, forgiveness. We practice love in this difficult season. Also, as we continue to be God's children, we will bring delight. We will rest in God's message, the gospel message, in glorious outcome. We are expecting a glorious outcome of everything, even the hardest things life brings. Friends, we're not allowing anxiety or fear grow within us. And we know we don't want to allow anxiety and fear grow in our church and family, not in our nation, we love. We don't want to let our fear and, and anxiety grow 
deep and it will continue to divide us in our nation, we pray every day. Let faith lead us. Let love win. Let kindness navigate our election season. We as believers uh, should not get caught up in, in politics or religion. We as a children of God should deeply understand that we work together. We grow together. We fight together. We lead together to get rid of the unhealthy fear and anxiety in our nations and in our lives. Church, we have faith and we have hope when it can get worse and worse. That's why we strongly hold on to the gospel in this election season. That's why we still pray for our nation. That is, that, that, that's the reason why we still pay attention and still vote. Even things are getting worse and getting worse. The things we are seeing in the world we live today are not in a good spot right now, but we deeply understand and remember that God is in control. In God, we trust. In politics, we lose it. In God, we trust. In politics, we lose. As our Savior and Redeemer Jesus Christ is speaking and encouraging our hearts today. Be careful. Be mindful. Be the center of the gospel. Be the center of our mission and service and purpose. Call. Love God and love others. That's our call. That's what it means to be, to believe the gospel, the center of the gospel. That's what it means to be uh, uh, the, the, the beloved God's community and beloved God's children here in this place. In this difficult time like this, we strongly put our trust in the Lord during concerning the times the seasons. We open up our hearts to rely on God. We open up our eyes to fix our, our eyes to the creator of the universe, the redeemer of the world and the sustainer of our lives, Jesus Christ. We're not in darkness. We're not in a division. We will overcome the darkness. And can we say amen? We'll overcome the darkness. We will overcome the division. Not evil for evil. Not blood for blood. We are here praying for our nation. We're here to show what we have inside of us. We are here to share the hope and the love of Christ with our brothers and sisters around us. Therefore, let us be kind. Let us be kind one another. Let us encourage one another. Let us comfort one another. Let us love and pray for one another as we go through this election season. This is what the scripture is asking each one of us. Be at peace among yourselves. Do not judge. Be patient with all. See that no one render evil for evil for anyone. Always pursue what is good, what is noble, what is pure, what is honest, what is genuine, what is true in front of God and in front of others as well. Rejoice always. This is what, I, what I'm asking each one of you to do. Rejoice always no matter what happens in the future. Not only rejoicing in happy things and happy times, but even in pains, struggles, and sorrows we face in our future. We as believers know that joy is not based in circumstances, but in God alone. We find our salvation and joy and comfort and peace in God alone. You know what? In the future, circumstances, surroundings may change. But God is not. God is not changing himself. God does not change at all. God will be faithful God. Can we say amen? Amen. amen. This, is who, this is what we believe. In God, we trust. In God, we find salvation, comfort, and peace. As Paul is speaking to our heart this morning through the scripture, pray without ceasing. 
Pray for the people who are around you. Pray for the people who are going through a difficult time. Pray uh, without ceasing. Pray for the nation and leaders. This is a time for all of us to pray for our nation. This is a time for us to pray for our community. This is a time for the pray for our leaders. Pray for our nation and church and our family around us. This is what Paul is asking and encouraging each one of us. In everything, give thanks to God. We don't give thanks for everything, but in everything, we recognize God is in control. God knows what He is doing right now. We as a believer recognize God's redeeming love and saving power are in our lives. And we pray together in the name of the Father and, and, and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We pray for the leaders in the nation and community and the people around us. Even the people who are different from us. Even the people who are enemies in our journey. This is what we are going to do. We kneel down, we'll pray for for nation and for the people and, 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 and for the community. Not my kingdom, but let your kingdom come. Let your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Friends, this is my prayer for all of you. Now may the God of peace himself guide you, mold you, teach you, illuminate you, navigate you, and sanctify you completely. May your entire spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, honest, and genuine, loving and forgiving in front of God and in front of others. Please be the person God has called you to be. Be the person God has asked you to be and to do in this journey. May God's grace be with you in this election season. May God's grace continue to fill your heart with his wisdom and understanding and power of the scripture. Let me read a word of God to you. Second Corinthians, Second uh, uh, Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. Therefore, let us make every effort to do what leads to peace according to Romans chapter 14 verse 19. Let us pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding. We must always aim at those things that bring peace to help strengthen one another in this beautiful season. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32. Be kind. Be compassionate to one another. Forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. Be kind to each other, sympathetic, forgiving each other as Christ forgave you. This is what the Lord requires each one of us. This is what God is encouraging each one of us to do and to be in this election season. We put all our concern into the hands of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us continue to humble ourselves, lifting all our prayers to God. Not my will, but your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Can we all pray together? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you once again for reminding each one of us we are your people people of love and mercy and compassion and forgiveness. God, we gather here praying for our nation, praying for our leaders, praying for the election, praying for our heart, praying for the leaders, and praying for the church and family. God, will you please give us your desire to be kind, to be generous, to be loving and forgiving, to be faithful in this season. We are all reminded 
We will continue to do good, no harm, stay in love with them. We will continue to be your people of love and grace and mercy in this election season. Give us your heart so that we can become kindness in this beautiful season. God will love you. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. Why don't you turn around? Simply say, Be kind. Come on, be kind. Come on, be kind. Okay, why don't you turn around? Do not judge. Okay, this is the last one. Love everybody. Amen. I feel like singing. Do you think I can sing? Amen.